Thank you, Madam Chair. I have two questions uh, for Secretary Cardona and one for Secretary uh, Becerra. I know you're in Indiana recently, and schools across the country are trying to reopen, and uh, my travels, uh, everybody's trying to do it safely. Uh, it's different, uh, every school corporation. Um, and I know that uh, some of those meetings are a little rowdy. Uh, in this case, I think the discussion was on uh, mask mandates, curriculum related to maybe critical race theory. Um, and I think that that civic engagement, I was on a school board for 10 years, and I always tell people, you'll get an earful of something, it'll be a good indication whether you're ready for something else. But uh, I was a little disturbed, in, and I want to see if you really meant the comment. Uh, and it was in relation to uh, how, why are they doing this? And I'm going to quote this, uh, and your response for that engagement was, I think it's a proxy for being mad that their guy didn't win. And I'm quoting it verbatim here. And I know you probably didn't mean that, and I'll give you a chance to retract it. Uh, is that something you'd want to take back? I know that across the country, our school board meetings are uh, a little bit more uh, intense, but I'll tell you, School boards are unwavering in their support for returning students to school and providing a safe learning environment. For what school. about the statement? And I agree with you 100% there. Would you want to take that back to not politicize something where I think it's an honest, sincere difference of opinion across the country? And I don't know that I'd want to be on record with that. Senator, I, I'll tell you the, the lack of civility in some of our meetings is disappointing and frustrating, especially because our superintendents and educators and board members, and you should know you're a board member, they've worked tirelessly over the last 18 months to provide a safe environment. For and I know it can get rowdy and um, I'll take it that you don't want to retract it at this point. So uh, rowdy, it was very dangerous in yes. some places. Um, Indiana has led the nation in school choice and uh, it's something that coming through the pandemic, I think it's clear that parents, again, ought to be the drivers of the equation. Uh, I think parents uh, from K through 12, and especially uh, with uh, them that have had kids pursue a four-year degree and they end up in the basement with an unmarketable degree, need to have more say-so. They pay the bills through property taxes, then tuition, room, and board. Fairly quick answers here, because I want to get to Secretary Becerra. Do you think parents should be in charge of their child's education as the primary stakeholder? I believe parents are important stakeholders, but I also believe primary. educators have a role in determining uh, educational programming. And I think that's gonna be a little out of focus what I think you're gonna find across all elements of education. Since they pay the bills, they raise the kids, they probably need to be the primary uh, spokespeople for their own kids good education. Uh, should parents have more school options, including private schools? As I said in previous hearings, I believe uh, public education schools should be a, the first and best option. The neighborhood school, children want to be in their neighborhood school, but parents should have options, and I believe they do across the country. So I think it sounds like you'd think there might need to be more options. I came from a great public school system. Uh, I think competition and choice always exceeds any of the other things when you want to get real quality at something. Should the money follow the student or should it follow the school? I believe education systems should have strong schools for all students and I believe we need to make sure we are investing in public schools because for some students who that's their only option, we need to have that be a high quality option for all students. Thank you. Secretary Becerra, We've been navigating through this saga of fighting the coronavirus, uh, which has been uh, challenging in many respects. Uh, the baseline of fighting it uh, have been vaccines. Uh, some countries are under 10% vaccination rates. We can see variants come from there normally. What's your opinion on making it maybe a tripod of therapeutics and prophylactics? And I know Pfizer uh, is out there, I think, addressing a real market need that we not only keep doing what we're doing on vaccines, but we put equal emphasis on curing it once you get it and preventing it in the first place. What do you think? All of the above, Senator. And when are we going to start pushing it from this level to where we give resources and emphasis in a more broad-based approach? 
Well, I, I think at HHS we've been doing that because the fact that we're able to meet so much of the demand these days for therapeutics is a sign of that. But I, I want to make sure we remember that it's the, all of the above. And as my mom used to always tell me, mejor prevenir que remediar, better to prevent than to remediate. And so therefore masking, social distancing, all those things that prevent us from getting sick and therefore needing the things that top, keep us from dying are the most important things we can do. Very good. I'm glad to hear you're on board with a broader approach of uh, uh, remediation and uh, protection from it in the first place. Thank you.